Welcome to part two of our look at Canon's Cinema EOS family of cameras. In this section, we're going to look at HD capture and recording with the C100 and the C300. These are both HD only camcorders. Now the C100 records to SD cards, two of them. And this permits either relay recording, which is recording continuously from one slot to the other as the first fills up, or double slot recording, which is a redundant technique where both cards record the same thing. It's a little bit like RAID 1 capture when you're using RAID 1 disks or a disk drive. Two 32 gigabyte SD cards in sequence will record nearly three hours at ABC HD's highest bit rate, 24 megabits per second. That's its highest quality image, and that includes its highest quality audio, which is linear PCM. Now, one of the advantages of ABC HD is its high compression, its efficient compression, and that allows you to record three hours onto two cards. But there are limitations. ABC HD only records 1920 by 1080 and 1440 by 1080 in this camera. There's no 1280 by 720. It's an ABC HD codec, which means H.264. That's what ABC HD is. Chroma subsampling is 420, and frame rates are video frame rates. In other words, 24 is 23.98p, 30 frames per second is 29.97, and 60 is 59.97. Now, we can get uncompressed HD from the C100 through the HDMI port. It's embedded timecode in the HDMI stream, which is a unique feature. In the other two cameras, the C300 and the C500, the HDMI only offers superimposed timecode, superimposed onto the image. In the C100, though, the HDMI port offers uncompressed HD with embedded timecode, which means it can be recorded to a third-party recorder if you wish to record uncompressed HD. If you need remote control of this camera, there's a very cheap way to do that. All you have to do is disconnect the hand grip and there is a mini phone plug that connects the hand grip to the camera. It's a four conductor mini phone plug. All you need is a cheap cable that connects these two under five bucks and you can put this camera on a jib arm and because you're using an intelligent hand grip, you have control over iris, starting and stopping, menu uh, choices through the joystick. In terms of ergonomics, the C100 is small and light, especially when paired with a small light lens like this EF 24 to 105 L series zoom, which happens to be the kit lens that Canon has selected to be paired with this camera. I could hold this all day. This is not heavy at all. And of course, I would be holding it with this hand grip, which I've unattached. Now you'll need this hand grip. It's the same intelligent hand grip that the C300 uses. You'll need it on the C100 because the only way to change menu settings on the C100 is through the joystick on the back of this hand grip. There is no separate button or control knob or dial to get to menu selections on this camera. So you won't see many C100s used without the hand grip attached. One of the settings I would change using the joystick on the hand grip is the fan setting because this camera, when it, its default mode is for the fan to be on all the time, I don't think that's necessary. Set it to automatic. When you do that, the fan will turn on only when the camera gets hot or is overheating, which isn't very often unless you're shooting in the desert. Uh, but generally speaking, you won't hear the fan very often. Now, lastly, I use eyeglasses, and the C100 comes without a rubber eye cup. You'll notice that the C500 has a big rubber eye cup, a big, uh, generous eye cup. So my solution is I borrow an eye cup from HDV camcorders made by another manufacturer, and these were made some time ago, but they had an eye cup that happens to match the size of this, and therefore, now I have an eye cup, which works very well. So that's my solution for the C100. Now, a couple of things about the C300. 
over here. The C300 uses compact flash cards instead of SD cards, two of them, which permits the same type of relay recording between the two cards or double slot redundant recording between the two cards, just like the C100, only these are compact flash. It also records MPEG-2 instead of AVCHD. MPEG-2 is long GOP and is pretty efficient also. Two 32 gigabyte uh, compact flash cards in sequence can record 2.7 hours at MPEG-2's highest bit rate, 50 megabits per second. So that, that compares pretty favorably actually with the C100. Um, in terms of being in a documentary situation. Now the HD shooting modes, MPEG-2, in this camera are 1920 by 1080, and there are two bit rates, 50 megabits per second, 422, chromosome subsampling, and 35 megabits per second, 420. There's a 1440 by 1080 format, which is 25 megabits per second, 422. And lastly, there's a 1280 by 720 format, which is 50 megabits per second, 422, and 35 megabits per second, uh, 420. And uh, 1280 by 720 adds a 50p and a 60p frame rate uh, at both 50 megabits per second and 35 megabits per second. Of course, being MPEG-2, those are video frame rates. 23.98 frame rate, however, for video is complemented by a second 24 frame rate for filmmaking in HD when you're shooting 1920 by 1080. Long GOP MPEG-2, of course, is saved in MXF container files. That's the .MXF that you see at the end of your file after you've recorded it. That's a standard container file and every NLE recognizes that. So you'll have no problem importing these files. Now in addition to the standard MPEG to uh, file formats, there are some special recording modes. Interval recording for time lapse. Frame recording mode, which allows you to shoot for stop motion a frame at a time. And also there's a slow and fast motion mode. In 1920 by 1080, uh, you can record 1 to 29.97 frames per second in 1 frame per second increments, or in 1280 by 720, you can record 1 to 59.94 frames per second in 1 frame per second increments. The simple way to think of that is 1 to 30 frames per second for 1920 by 1080 and 1 to 60 frames per second for 1280 by 720. And of course if you play 60 frames per second back at 24 frames you get a wonderful slow-mo effect. Now the C300 also includes Genlock, which the C100 does not have. Genlock, of course, permits this camera to be locked to any number of other C300s or C500s for multi-camera operation. Now, for remote control, the situation is similar to the C100 in that if you remove the hand grip, the intelligent hand grip, which is the same as the one the C100 uses, and get your $5 cheap four pin conductor, mini phone extension cable. You can put this in a, re a difficult place and stand 10 feet away and also via the cable control this camera, at least in terms of iris, starting and stopping, uh, menu access. If you are a little bit more adventuresome, you might try remote control via Wi-Fi. Canon has created a a WFT E6 wireless file transmitter. It's a little dongle that you attach to a dedicated port on the side of the C300. It says WFT so you can't mistake it for something else. And when you connect the Wi-Fi dongle and you're in the vicinity of a Wi-Fi network and you have a device like an iPad that can show a browser, any device, it can be a laptop or an iPad, that, can, that uses a browser by entering the IP address of the C300, which is given to it by the dongle, you're able to display on the browser a control panel. And that control panel, that's a Wi-Fi remote screen, allows you to control remotely the focus, the shutter speed, the ISO gain, etc., of the C300, as well as monitoring the image. Now, it's, it's not 
full frame, uh, full, you know, 30 frames a second or 24 frames a second. It's a little slower, but you have a sense of what the C300 is seeing. So that's a really exciting new development that's available for the C300, and of course that will work on the C500 as well. Now, the C300 is a little bit bigger than the C100, but with smaller lenses like this 24 to 105 L series EF lens, it's still a pretty compact package. I can put this lens on and hold this camera pretty easily. By the way, one of the things that I do do is when I use the LCD, I flip it underneath like this because that gives me a viewfinder perspective and also I'm able to monitor using the LCD. Now the LCD is useful because the LCD displays waveform and vector scope and a special focusing mode where you see a waveform of the entire image along the bottom and that allows you to focus uh, in a more objective way. You can kind of see when the waves are peaking you know that you've got focus. Again, I undersling this monitor. Some people, if you're using this on a tripod for instance, might want to use this in this configuration. This is the handle for the um, C300 and the monitor would go on top like that. That to me is too tall for handheld work and I prefer a smaller setup like this but either one would work. At the top of the LCD panel on this platform there's a mirror button and when you press the mirror, it flips the image on the LCD panel, right, left, up, down, so that in any configuration using this panel, it's almost origami-like, you can always have the proper orientation by flipping the mirror button. It's very useful. Another thing that I like very much about the way this has been organized is that the audio control uh, dials are here. And this is very thoughtful because they're actually right next to the XLRs that they control. So in the heat of battle, if I'm a, a one-man operator, I can look up and I know which dial is controlling which XLR input. On other cameras, the dials are often separated from the XLR inputs, and you have to think for a second to remember which is which. Sometimes the XLR inputs are not even next to each other. So that's a feature that I find to be very thoughtful. Larger, heavier lenses will change all of this. This is a lightweight lens that favors hand holding, easy to hand hold. But if I'm using a much larger lens like this Canon 14.5 to 60 cinema lens, this is a 4K zoom, this probably weighs four times what the camera weighs at least. And this is going to require the use of a rig, a shoulder rig, with rods in the front to support the weight of this and rods in the back if we want either to attach a larger battery or maybe we want to attach a third-party recorder to record uncompressed HD from the C300. A third-party external recorder is necessary for capturing 4K RAW. In our next segment, we're going to look at capturing and recording 4K with the C500 and the 1DC. Please join us for this discussion. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.